Hi guys, welcome to this video on extracting metals from the ground, where you're going to learn how reactivity and the method of extraction are linked. So here you can see the order of reactivity from potassium all the way down to gold. Potassium is the most reactive and gold is the least reactive in this list. Now you should remember from a previous video that most metals are found in ores. An ore is any rock that contains metal where it's profitable for it to be extracted. Now the exception to that are silver and gold. Silver and gold are both very unreactive, so they do not react with oxygen, they do not react with anything. So what we say is these are found uncombined in the earth. If they're uncombined, all you have to do is dig them out. Now, even when you dig them out, they might not be 100% pure, so what you have to do is refine them. If we move on to the less reactive metals then, which as you can see here are zinc, iron, tin and copper, these are all ones that are less reactive than carbon. So as you can see from my list here, I've got carbon in there even though it's a non-metal. Everything below that is less reactive than carbon, and anything above it is more reactive than carbon. So what you need to do if you get a metal that is less reactive than carbon, that isn't silver or gold, is to heat it with carbon, and that will help to extract it. Now this is done in a blast furnace, which you don't need to know anything about. All you need to be able to say is you heat it with carbon in a blast furnace. So for example then, if you had iron ore, which is iron oxide, and you wanted to extract it, the first thing you'd say is it's less reactive than carbon, therefore you heat it with carbon. So if you were trying to write the word equation for this, it would be iron oxide plus carbon, which is then heated, which will give you iron and carbon dioxide. Which if you were to do the symbol equation for it is Fe2O3 plus C goes to Fe plus CO2 which you then need to balance as you can see I've done here. Now, if you're wondering how I got these word equations, there is a link at the bottom of the screen which will show you how to write the word equations for these reduction reactions as well as how to do the balanced chemical equations. So have a click on both of them and that should fill you in on what you need to know. Okay, that's how you can extract the less reactive elements. What about the reactive ones, the ones that are more reactive than carbon? What you need to be looking at here is the fact that you can't use carbon because it's not reactive enough, so you've got to use something else, and in that case, that is electrolysis. So in order to tell you what electrolysis is, then, I'm going to use the example of aluminium oxide. So aluminium oxide is one of the metals that is more reactive than carbon, so you can't heat with carbon. So what you do is you split it up with electricity, which is your electrolysis. Now, in order to be able to do that, the first thing you've got to do is have molten aluminium oxide. So what you have to do is melt it. Now, in the case of aluminium oxide, you need to use something special, and that is cryolite, which is a form of aluminium which is helpful in dissolving aluminium oxide. So to carry out the procedure then, you get your aluminium oxide, you melt it, and you add it into your electrolysis equipment. You use a direct current to separate the two, and then what will happen is your aluminium ions will move to the opposite charge. So the aluminium will go to the negative electrode and the oxygen will go to the positive electrode. Here, aluminium will gain three electrons and turn back into solid aluminium. And every oxygen ion will lose two electrons to go back to an oxygen atom. That will join together with another oxygen atom to make O2, meaning that four electrons are taken away in total. Don't worry about the half equations that I've drawn here. I will be covering that in another video if you're not sure. The question now then is, you've got all these two different methods of extraction, which one should you use? And the answer is the cheapest. So electrolysis is the most expensive one, and that's because lots of electricity is needed to actually break the compounds apart. So if you have the choice, don't choose that one. What you want to choose is heating with carbon. And that's because carbon is cheap and it acts as a fuel which will keep the temperature high. Finally then, how can you remember which method to use? Now in the exam you're not going to have the reactivity series, so it's important to be able to figure it out. Now my suggestion to you is go with the rule that groups 1, 2 and 3 are the really reactive ones, so those are the ones you use electrolysis with. The block in the middle and everything else that's a metal use heating with carbon. All you need to remember is that silver and gold are found uncombined, stuff in the transition metals 
reduce with carbon, and then groups 1, 2 and 3 use electrolysis. Okay guys, we've got a few questions for you to have a go at. So the first one is a nice six marker which says metals can either be found as ores or uncombined. Explain the best method to extract gold, potassium and copper from the ground. Your answer should include reference to reactivity and cost in your answer. So to answer this one, think to yourself again, which were the ones we said were uncombined? There's two. Which ones in group one, two or three? They're the ones you use electrolysis. Which ones are the transition metals? That's the one where you reduce and heat with carbon. So look on your periodic table, find that out, and have a go at answering the question. Question two, write the word equation for the extraction of iron from its oxide using carbon. That's worth two marks, so one mark for the reactants, one mark for the products. And then number three, write a balanced equation for the extraction of aluminium from aluminium oxide, Al2O3. That's worth three marks, one for the reactants, one for the products, one for the balancing. So pause the video and have a go now. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at that then. So let's have a look at the mark scheme. So if we start off with gold, you should remember that's one of the two that is unreactive. So you get one mark for saying gold is unreactive. If it's unreactive, it doesn't react with anything, therefore it's uncombined. And if it's uncombined, all you have to do is dig it out of the ground. If we move on to potassium, it's the reactive one, it's in group one, therefore it's reactive, therefore you have to use electrolysis. So in terms of the mark scheme, the first thing to talk about is that it's more reactive than carbon. Don't say just it's reactive, say it's more reactive than carbon, which means you can't extract with carbon, you have to use electrolysis. If we move on to copper, copper again relating it to the reactivity of carbon is less reactive than carbon. If it's less reactive than carbon, then you can extract it by reducing or heating with carbon. Then the final reference point is to talk about cost. Make sure you get that in there. So for copper, you could use electrolysis, you could use heating with carbon, it would work for both. However, you go with carbon instead of electrolysis because it's cheaper. If we move on to question two, write the word equation for the extraction of iron from its oxide using carbon. So the oxide is just called iron oxide. So iron oxide plus carbon, which gets you your first mark, produces iron, which is your metal, and then the gas that's always given off is carbon dioxide. So one mark for your products. And then the final question, which is write the balanced equation for the extraction of aluminium from aluminium oxide. So you start off with Al2O3, and you get one mark for writing that in there. And then on the right hand side in your products, you get aluminium and oxygen. All that's left is to balance it for your third mark. So if we look over here, we have an odd number of oxygen, We've got an even number over here, so we've got to do something with this. So we start off by doubling it. That gives me four aluminiums and six oxygens. So on the right-hand side, I've got one aluminium. I need four, so I times it by four. And then I've got two oxygens. I need six, so I times it by three. And that gets you your third mark. That pretty much sums up this video. All that's left is the review, which is metals can be either found as ores or uncombined. Explain the best method to extract silver, aluminium, and iron from the ground. Similar questions to the one that you saw previously, just with different metals. And then you've got two equations to write. One's a word equation for the extraction of copper using carbon, and then the extraction of copper from copper oxide using carbon. Write the balanced equation for it. And that ends this video. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to get more updates. You can visit the website for more information and you can look at my latest video. Thanks for watching.